And so, the greatest space opera to have ever graced the pages of Weekly Shonen Jump has finally ended. After 27 chapters, Earth Child is dead. Earth Child was a lot of things, but a good manga it was not. When I last covered the series, I was especially harsh on how inconsistent the entire thing was. Each chapter was half-baked, and at no point in time did I ever feel any connection to the supporting characters. Every moment made me feel so unsatisfied, and I spent much of my time scratching my head, wondering what the hell is going on. The final weeks of Earth Child is melodrama galore. Hideki Shinkai is a horrible writer. He's a passable artist, but still not a very good one. If you dare to read the final chapters of this monstrosity, be prepared to experience great discomfort. Mamoru helps save the day by utilizing his telekinesis to merge with Milfy Captain Marvel and Japanese Ross to finally return to Earth. And life goes on. They become an Earth-saving family that goes on missions to advert disasters, despite Rusuke basically pleading for his family to escape the confines of Earth children duties. Despite the fact that the space organization with basically zero funding already agreed multiple times that they will move on from Keriri being their designated Earth child. Despite the fact that the Sawada family wanted to return to a sense of normalcy after almost getting lost in fucking space. Trusting this organization to come up with a good plan to save Keiriri only for them to fail time and again. But whatever, the author changes motives every chapter. What really makes no fucking sense is having a grown Mamoru be such a bitch wanting to seek glory for himself, but not actually contributing anything to the plot, aside from crying just like his father. Him having a speaking role really brings down the only good thing about Earth Child, the conversations between Risuke and Keiriri. When God, Terra, or whatever comes back, I actually lost my shit. I won't go into detail for this part of the story, because there isn't much to go into. Terra makes Mamoru cry by showing him false memories of his parents arguing, which causes him to have a fucking mental breakdown for some reason. The scene made no sense. You want us to believe that Mamoru is going to be distracted from saving his drowning parents because a middle-aged woman in a schoolgirl outfit tells him that by keeping his parents alive, they'll never smile again. They'll become an unhappy couple who will fight? Things get really turned when Terra then proceeds to create clouds in the sky that make Mamoru cry even more. These clouds explain to him the pain and agony that his parents will go through by staying together as a family. Wait, di didn't we just go through this in last week's chapter? These late chapters lack any real action, and Hideki seems to be incapable of drawing physical contact, so we just see a lot of wind pushing and cloud bursting, and so much bad emotional abuse. We know that Risuke is a weak human. That's the entire point of the manga, how a human with no powers and special traits can move those with the power of gods to protect humanity. Earth Child sucked because the mangaka knew what he wanted to write about, but he didn't know how to write it. Even up until the final climactic battle, we get so many flashbacks and what-ifs instead of conflict resolution, and the lame family meeting at the end reads like you're participating in a Fast and Furious script run-through. Anyone who tells you that Earth Child was good past the first chapter is lying to you. Do not trust them, for they have no taste. This entire manga was just plain bad. The only good thing about Earth Child is the relationship between Risuke and Keiriri. It's so jarring how you won't remember nor care about anything that you read involving the supporting characters, but when Risuke and Keiriri are the only ones on screen, they really steal the show. 
The conversations between them feel the most organic throughout this series. I think if Earthchild was a story that explored a young adult's developing relationship with a doomed secret hero who's tasked with protecting the Earth from cosmic, political, and environmental incidents, that this could have been an exceptional manga. Even with Keiriri's death, we could have seen Rusuke, a single father with no powers, learning to raise a special needs child on his own. How would he raise Mamoru? To become an inevitable pawn of the earth? Or would he teach him to live his own life without any obligations to humanity? As many have mentioned before, that first chapter was one of the best openers for a manga that I had ever read. It felt fresh and started briskly like the sort of manga that I loved as a kid. And I think that's why I feel so hurt by how stale this series became with each subsequent chapter. There was so much promise. This was a story that could have been internationally popular. It was something unique that Shonen Jump hadn't done before. A tragic sci-fi manga about a male widow raising his troubled son. In Japan, being a widow is a touchy topic. That could have been something that Shinkai built upon, but the story we got instead was the worst possible reality. I would only recommend Earthchild if you want to intentionally piss yourself off. You can read it in a single night. 1 out of 10.